This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rent till I have time back with his good friend Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How you doing, buddy? Here we are. I'm excited to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Dude, well, uh, you know, I watched the Fed meeting. I got the 75 and then all hell broke <laughs> loose. And uh, what the hell is going on? What 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 would you call what happened Thursday, Friday, and bleeding over to Monday? What what is all this going on? Yeah, I I I I think that you might call this a bear market bounce. I think things are getting overcooked in the short term on the positive side on this quote unquote dovish tilt that the Fed took, et cetera. <laughs> you mean risk isn't on and we're you're, we're going to the moon again? Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. The economy's awesome. We continue to see recessionary signals everywhere we look, outside of maybe the labor market, although the rate of change is definitely slowing when it comes to job growth, as we discussed. Um, yeah, all the economic news seems to be leading towards recession, and we get this massive rally out of the market. And I get that there was a dovish tilt to the Fed's unprepared, quote unquote, unprepared comments, and that they're near neutral and that they're not going to have to slow the pace, et cetera. They're at neutral. He didn't say they're at, near neutral. they're at neutral. Sorry. I don't want to stuff bad words in their mouth, although it's more ridiculous when you yeah, say it's at more neutral. ridiculous. Oh my God. Um, but this is nothing new. Bear market bounces are something that, that have taken place over time. And you look at the last few recessions, like 2020 didn't have a bear market bounce because, because it, was it was this big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was 45 days, right? It just went boom to the moon from there. But if you look back at the last two recessions prior to that, 2008, 2000, those were more prolonged recessions where you can get times where the market actually bounces and you're like, oh, good, we're off to the races, we're out of this thing. And then, oh, no, we're back in it again. And all of a sudden, there's more downside. And it hurts even worse when it happens the second time through. So just to give some context, wrap some numbers around it, in 2000, the market bounced 21% and then hit a new low afterwards. Oh, in 2008, wow it bounced 23% and then hit a new low, low thereafter. So we've bounced now something like 13% and it feels good right now. I got to think that with the negative economic data that's being spit out right now, we're going to see more downside. Do we make a new low? I don't know, but I don't think it's up from here. That's not our thought process. We think things are overdone in the positive direction in the short term. Yeah, the one, the one again, I'm in the Valley. I probably look at tech too much frankly yeah, yeah. i admit it but it looks like tech is really kind of come back into favor all of a sudden and again we still have all the headwinds right we have the strong dollar which you brought us before every one percent up is a five uh, half a percent hit to earnings correct it, you know a lot of people now are betting on the dollar reversing right the dollar is well, peaked, and some of that's because well, the fed pivot and all these things are tied together that's exactly right. Boy, it's just this interwoven mess that you got to try to peel apart piece by piece. But the big thing when it comes to tech, the big thing when it comes to tech is tech is essentially a long duration asset. You're betting on growth very far out in the future. So tech also happens to be very, very, very interest rate sensitive. Yes. So when the Fed says we're not going to move rates as quickly, tech rallies. But on the other hand, in 2000, the Fed pivoted and tech rallied, and then the market realized that earnings were going to continue to be in a recessionary time frame, and then tech sold off miserably thereafter. So it's not just, hey, you know, when when the Fed turns the spigot off and and starts to you know take that dovish tilt, go all in on tech. Like that's the way the market's acting right now. Yeah. History says that that's not the way you need to respond to it. Yeah, one of the things again, having experienced the dot com up close and personal as a private company was going to go public, and then you know all hell broke loose. Um, V-shaped recoveries like we saw in 2020 and a lot of buy the dippers are betting on are not normal, right? Didn't it take NASDAQ like six years to get back to its peak? Out of the 2000, the 2000 was a brutally long time frame. Yeah. Even the S&P was something like six years or something to that yeah. extent. It was a really long time where it troughed and it just kept slogging on down and down and down. I think what happened, and don't quote me on this, but it's approximately correct. 99 hit the peak. You started to come down. You came down through 2000. Then it bounced just slightly during 2001, mm -hmm. and then it sold off miserably in 2002. Yeah. And so that's the type of thing that you got to be aware of is like these things don't always happen in a vacuum. They don't always happen in a short time frame where there's COVID. You can just put your finger right yeah. on it and say, okay, economic policy is going to bail us out. Fiscal and monetary policy is going to bail us out. That's not the economy that we're in right now. We're in a slowing rate of growth economy, and it's just a tougher one to see the 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 the, the 
the finish line here in the really short term. Yeah, the biggest um, thing, the biggest thing for me, and kind of going back to our episode number one, that I again, I'm a macro econ guy. Yep. You're the you're the Wall Street guy, and a good one, the, and a good yeah. one at that. You. I'm okay. Seriously, Don, your, 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 your inflation marks and, and your just kind of general recessionary marks have been very directional. Awesome. Uh, I think a lot of Wall Streeters, yourself included, right? You have 10 years on the street, but mm-hmm. it's, it's, it was when the Fed put worked a la 2018, yep. right? Yep. Yep. I, yep. I no have done, I've done a lot of research on the early 80s, and I just don't know how, even if we get into a recession, and I think, I believe we will have negative GDP all four quarters this year. The economy without question is shrinking. And I think Q3, Q4 will finally be flagged as a recession. Q1, Q2 won't. I don't, I don't, I just, I don't know how he pivots in that. I think, I think inflation is far stickier, right? When I look at 9-1, this is again, this is the most important economic question I have. I did a, I did a whiteboard discussion on this. Let me break it down because I want your opinion because I think we're going to disagree, which is awesome. So you put nine one on the board, right? Just one big bar chart. The big question is how much of that rolls off fast, i.e. transitory, i.e. deflation, i.e. bull. Basically, what I always said is, hey, Kathy Wood believes six or maybe 7% of this is going to fall off magically because of pixie dust and rainbows. Right. Right. And if that's the case, Powell's done. You know what? Yep. If, 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 if seven points fall off this year, Kathy Wood is right. Powell is right. He's at even. Yep. Yep. I'm looking. And the market probably rips too. Oh, the market rips on that. Oh, it, 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 yeah, it just goes bonkers. I look at nine one going maybe 2% of that is kind of, you know, transitory and, you know, deflation and this, that, the other thing, but that still leaves us with seven and yep. you don't fix seven with two and a half. And yep. if he's going to go up at a quarter a time or a half, a, he got a lot of work to do. That is the yeah. most important question. So how much of 9-1 is sticky versus, I'll call it transitory for lack of a better term. What, what do you think? Yeah, your answer is going to be better than mine, admittedly, just because you know the makeup of inflation better than I do. Um, I know the big three are obviously the housing component, which is incredibly sticky, as we've all talked about. The energy component, which is sticky-ish, but that's abating some. So we're seeing a movement. But we are going to head into winter, right? Again, you got to remember winter's coming. Freaking Europe could be without nat gas. Man, this, yeah, this usually is, usually it's the inverse though. Usually summer's a tough time on energy prices. That's true. Usually summer yeah. summer yeah. presses up for, the energy prices. Yeah, so I, to your point though, that second comment is is really important. Like Russia is playing some interesting games that are going on overseas right now. So that is having a massive effect on what's going on. They just cut off uh, cut off nat gas to Latvia. Yeah, um, I heard that. Yeah. So so they're playing some really weird games. Um, it would not be a shock to say that they just cut Germany off. No. Um, they toyed with that idea before, and that's going to show some really weird um, kind of yeah. outputs in the nat gas market. So that energy in general, though, does seem to be rolling over yeah, some. Agreed. Some. And then the food prices are something that we've discussed at length. Um, as commodities have rolled over, wheat, corn, etc., um, have rolled over. But at the same time, to your point, it doesn't automatically hit the grocery bill. And that's something that's the other big third component, third leg of it. Yeah. We haven't seen it roll over yet, but I do think that that portion is transitory. I do think okay. that that is going to start to move downwards and continue to move downwards. So, so, so what I'm hearing you say without saying it is again, if nine, one is the bar chart, you think we pretty easily get to five and a half, six by the end of the year. CPI? No, not by the end of the year. No. Okay. No, no, not by the end. It won't so be not that quite quick. that no. fast. Okay. No, it won't be that quick. But to see five and a half midway through next year, that's that's not a stretch, I don't think. So that's interesting. Again, just my opinion. We're talking to other Wall Street guys. I it's it's really fun because you're you're far closer to what I am. I'm like you might get to five and a half. For me, it would be like six and a half, but a percent doesn't matter by next summer, sure. right? So that's that's twelve months. That could happen. Yeah. A lot of a lot of people. I, it's amazing how many people think we could be sub six by the end of the year. Dude, the yeah, end of the year I, I, is like four months away. I know, right there. Right. Exactly. I think that what it is is a rate of change game. So again, as he gets the movement downwards, it's it, it, it likely, well, I say that in the seventies, it did. Um, I was going to say it likely doesn't revert back upwards. In, like I said, in the seventies, it did. Volcker yeah, had to look, come in and smash on the brakes. The double dip. Yeah. Again, off. if you come, if you, this is my biggest fear, a double dip, version of this because the second one is not good yep 
Yeah, no, you're right there. And so, uh, you know, when you, when you think about the, not necessarily the economic portion of it, but the market portion of it, mm-hmm. um, that's kind of like what we lean on is um, the last times that we've seen CPI moving up with Fed rates moving up simultaneously was like there was three really good periods and case studies that you can look at during this. It's and I have notes right here, so pardon me looking aside. 69, 75, and 81. So okay. inflation was taken off and Fed funds were taken off along with it to try to curb that inflation. The interesting thing about it is, is everyone rallied based on that dovish tilt that it had last week that, that he said. Yeah. But when you look back at timeframes when inflation was high and the Fed funds rate was going high along with it, those three timeframes we can look at after the Fed stopped raising rates. So mm-hmm. not after they mentioned, hey, we might slow down. After they stopped in 69, it took nine months until the market formed a bottom in 75, it took three months, and then it took 13 months in 82. So that's after the Fed actually stops. It's not right. after they make this dovish comment that, hey, we might start to slow down. Mm. Um, so this is like, you've got to chew through inflation. To your point, it is stickier than what people perceive a lot of times. And I don't think, and I know this is counter to your thought, I don't think the Fed needs to continue to jam on the brakes. I think that inflation's rolling over now. And mm. again, granted, I've been in that camp too early, um, but I think the economic data that we're seeing is showing that it's slowing. Mm. And I think that that rate of change, unlike the 70s, where technology was not such a big component of what we can do in robotics and all of that thing driving down prices over time, I think that it kind of continues to drift yeah. downwards. Man, this is this is why the econ- studying economics is a daily activity because it's, it's just it's always changing and morphing. And once you think you figured it out, it slaps you in the face because you haven't. So, same with the stock market, always learning new stuff. Uh, Taylor, where can people find you? Because you put out daily content. Yeah, put look us up at Life Goal Investments on Instagram at Life Goal Investments on Instagram. All right, buddy. Thanks again. You're the man, Michael. Mm-hmm.